computer. Okay, there we go, folks. Hello, how are you? How are you all doing? It's a beautiful day here in New York. We took a little walk. It was okay. It was okay, you know. But anyway, let me uh, bring in all these people. We have a wonderful crowd on this show. And we really like them. Okay. And right now we have eight waiting. And I'm sure there'll be more that will be joining us. So uh, let's, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, but, 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 I've got to, uh, oh, here we go. Admit all. See, I'm losing it slightly, folks. I don't have the the chops I once had. Anyway, there they are. Those are all the names. Now let's see. They start. There's Marjorie Miller, and there's Charlotte. Oh. And there is our lovely and attractive Francine Witt. Uh, Char um, um, and there's uh, um, John Ewing. And there is Charlie. And uh, we're waiting for Jeff Stein to come in here and Scott Boddicker, who's changed his name to Maria because he originally changed his sex assignment. And where's Paula? Huh? Where's Paula? I don't know. She's she your she friend. Ask her why. I'm worried. When I don't hear from her, I worry, you know? So, uh, I'll send her a note. Jeff, are you going to, uh, are you going to come in here? Oh. Yeah, I just had it. I told her to go to the Facebook page. They couldn't get on on your other one. They couldn't get on what? They're going to your Facebook page to get on. Oh, they went to my Facebook page. I Just told kidding. them to go to the Facebook page. They went oh. to your other and couldn't get on. Well, that one should. Well, that one doesn't work. Well, because I that's not I Facebook. To, I told them to go to Facebook. Yeah, it's on on my Alex Bennett. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Gabnet.net. No, wait a minute. A Alex Bennett's Facebook. Yeah. So you would go to facebook.com forward slash Alex Bennett. And then it should have the little notification there I give that the gives link. the address the link. for this. Huh? Your link. Yeah, the link. Yeah. So yeah. it's there. Okay. Here comes, oh, here comes Paul 11. Okay. And there is, of course, Scott Boddicker, Maria. which is named Maria. <laughs> Using your wife's computer, huh? No, she uses my computer. Oh, I see. And so the last time she probably used it. Yeah. That I'm was fixed. How do I fix it? I got to figure that out. How, how do you what? I'll figure it out. Don't worry. Yeah, You'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Maybe. I doubt it. Anyway, hello, Paula. How are you? And then I have to say hello to, of course, our... He's smiling already. He knows it's coming. Yeah. Edward <laughs> Berger, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That is right. I love Here mounting at the same time you do. Jeff, Alex. Yeah, I know. I know. And Pamela's probably helping him get on. Yeah. Hmm. Good coffee. So we took a walk today. I can't walk anymore. My legs get all tired and I'm wobbly and, you know. So I am going to hire a young boy to carry me everywhere I <laughs> <laughs> That's how lazy I've gotten. You know, Marjorie, we were able to spend a, a, a decent amount of money on stuff. And Marjorie always says, well, we can always get somebody to drive us. You know? That's true. Yeah, I guess as you get older, you know, I I, I even thought, because we could afford it, that you hire somebody to be here to take care of us. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, I'm suggesting my friend Tony. Uh, no, no, <laughs> yeah. no. no. <laughs> He, he did, don't even bring it up as an option. He did that for his mother. There's no he did way. That for his mother. And by the way, if you bring somebody in, the state will pay for them. Yeah, well, not him. Not him in this not department. Him? Oh, come on. He'd be fun. Oh, come on. come on. You know, if you want to feel better about yourself, you just look at him. You know? I'd rather not, Alex. Yes. Uh, uh, our, our good friend, uh, uh, Edward Berger here. That's who, right. Knows who I'm talking about, right? I know. I know. I know. Yes, right. 
Anyway, hello to everybody. I got it. Charlie got Walton. It. Did I say there Charlie Walton? There she is. And the, oh, there we go. There's Jeff. Give me a minute. Oh, yeah. Do we have the mute on? You can hear us too? Yeah, we can hear okay, you. Okay, done. There you go. Have fun, guys. We okay. had lunch with these guys. Uh, what was it? Sunday, right? We had a great time. Good night. Very nice. We had dinner, yeah. Alex. Uh, what? We had dinner. Yes, we had early dinner. dinner. Early dinner. Did I say lunch? Yeah. Oh, it was dinner. It was dinner. It was an early dinner. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, they, it, it, I, I always like these things like, uh, uh, what do you call it? You have breakfast, but then you have, what comes after that? Brunch. Mm -hmm. Now, brunch is a combination of breakfast and lunch, right? Mm -hmm. Why didn't they call it like... Um, Oh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Breakfast? Uh, how about how about lung fest? No. Hmm. Would that work? No. Brunch is so much easier. I just thought I'd do that. Okay. Hello, oh, hello also to Amy. And no, not Amy. Mandy. Oh God, I'm losing it, folks. I'm losing it. Okay, well, you're gonna be Amy for the rest of the show, okay? Mandy, okay. how is everything down there in Georgia? Pretty good. Is it on your mind? Yes, all the time. Yeah, you know, it, it, there's been a lot of romanticizing over the years about Georgia, about um, especially about uh, Atlanta, and not. Atlanta. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, where where are you? Live post. Hmm. I was I kept catching I was live um broadcast like right after like 20 minutes after you were done who's live broadcast your lives your facebook lives yesterday oh. you and Marty. oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah we did that <laughs> I, you we know did. what yeah, what <laughs> you did a thing <laughs> well you know what we we do this thing we go to the park we sit down we argue with each other for five minutes and that's it right that's the best it. way to describe the show <laughs> Yeah, and we post it. Wait a minute, we now, post I, it. I didn't know what date it was. Yeah, well, yeah we, that was funny. We post it. We post it. And um, how many viewers? How many viewers do we have? Uh, right as of right now, this this is mm -hmm. the amazing part. You know, I do a, a ramble, and I'm lucky if I get 200 people to watch it. You know, it, it, over the next couple of days, over a longer period of time, it adds up. Uh, but um, we do these things out in the park. They're nothing, right? We just banter back and forth about nothing in particular. And uh, then I look and see how many people have watched it. And so far, hold on a second. Let me turn this around here. Let me refresh it. So far, we've had 851 people. <laughs> in approximately 24 hours 851 people is that amazing yeah yeah we'll probably crack a million a, a million a thousand <laughs> yeah yeah hey, i'm losing it i've decided i'm losing it i had a guy who wanted me to do his show his national radio show and and uh he's an old friend and i so immediately i said sure i'll do it and then I got off the air one, the first night and it, I was kind of exhausted. And I went, his show goes on at 10 o'clock at night and goes to one o'clock in the morning on Sunday. That's a lot. And the question mm -hmm. is, do I have the, the uh, ability to go three hours? I used to be able to go three hours. And if nobody called, I could just talk for three hours. <laughs> I could not do that now. Just could not do it. So. I'm losing my powers, folks. Uh -oh. as, but as long as you still enjoy me, then I'll I'll keep doing it. We do, Alex. We do. Let me let me refresh this here and see. Eight hundred and fifty, still eight hundred and fifty-one. Somebody go over and look at it. <laughs> but eight hundred and fifty-one, Marjorie. Well, and I think it, less I think, than five minutes. And, and you watched it, right? A M A M. Mandy, Mandy, yeah. you yes. watched it. Anybody else here watch it? I watched yeah. it. You watched it? Yeah. 
Yeah. One of the reasons I think it is so easy to watch is it's like five minutes long. Yeah. You know, that's it. You're in, you're out. Nobody gets hurt. It was a gorgeous day, too. And it was a gorgeous day, too. Oh, my God. Everything is in bloom now. And uh, even trees downstairs that we have in this courtyard that are dead are in bloom. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's just amazing. Um, as we were going over to do this thing yesterday, past this thing, what, what what was that white thing up on a tree? I mean, it was just white flowers. Blossoms. The Blossom. blossoms that come first. Yeah, but what it's kind? What leaves. kind of tree yeah. was that? What kind of just just there, white? It seemed white. to grow this this year everywhere. Yeah. It was gorgeous. I love that color. It's white. Yeah. It, 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 well, actually, it's every color combined. Yeah. yeah that's what white is. But, so this past weekend, you had good weather. And the weekend before, when I was there, it was in the 40s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> today, oh, it's we, in the it, 80s. It just became spring here. Yeah. yeah. Today. It should have been spring, you know, at least three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. But no. And today we went out and it was, it was actually 81 degrees. And Marjorie says, you're walking slower than you can. I said, I'm hot. <laughs> and I'm old. That's the other mm-hmm. thing, too. So anyway, so we, we had a nice dinner with uh, with Jeff and Pamela. Yeah. Um, we had a good time. Yeah. And uh, she's his tech support, by the way, in case you don't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> she did so much better been about me? negotiating the the price. Yeah, uh, yeah. Remember that was a mistake. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, right, got, right at the restaurant. We, they charged you for uh, double which, double the drinks. Double yeah. the drinks. There were three drinks, and they charged us for six. For six. And um, we wouldn't have even looked at it, but she well, looked at it. <laughs> I just I never look at. It. I never add things. I, up. I never check things out. I go, oh, it's forty dollars. I'll it accept that. Attention. Yeah, you know. And then we we uh, and we and we've never had that problem at that restaurant. But, but you we know, never anyway. look at it. it <laughs> well, I'll tell you. you she, never know. Marjorie is such a lush that the owner, <laughs> the, the the owner who we know, okay. Um, um, thought that she had two drinks because she always had two drinks. Everyone had two drinks, Alex. Huh? He thought no, everyone. No, but Jeff then when he went and corrected it, he said, "I took off two of the two uh, two of the drinks." And we said, "Why?" Marjorie only had one. He said, "Oh, really? Oh, okay, I'll take it off too." <laughs> he, he didn't think, he couldn't conceive of the fact that you don't order a second prosecco. Prosecco. Ear. With ice cubes, yeah, you know, but you're you're uh, you're very easy to uh, deal with because you never change. You always order the same thing. I can also uh, tell what you're gonna order. order for, I can tell what you're gonna order for dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, every now and then, every now and then, I get exciting and I do something I haven't done before. <laughs> you know, try something I haven't done before, tried before. But you were always Prosecco, and then what? What was the pasta? Is the Alex? Well, we both shared the same pasta. What do you mean we shared the same pasta? Well, we both had the same meal. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So and that's horrible because you can't then stick your fork in her plate and say, "Let me see how this tastes." You know? <laughs> so we we I do it. Hate it when my wife did that. In fact, I think didn't no they they didn't order what we ordered, but they were going to. You know. So anyway, so it was nice, very nice. Yeah. Always great seeing them. But anybody else do anything exciting? Edward Berger, do you do th- exciting mm-hmm. things at all? Unless my niece is with me, no. What do you mean, unless your niece? Oh, she takes you to places. Yeah, we go out places. Yeah. And does she call the shots on where you go? Generally. Yeah. Give me an example of something, someplace you've gone. Like, like the ball. I don't see go like this June. We're going to the Mets and the Yankees game. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Well, you know, you can enjoy cool. that, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. We're in New York. Yeah. Uh, you know, down. In yeah, the Mets and the Yankees are playing in uh, <laughs> California. <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> <sighs> Marjorie, what's happening to you? I don't know. You know, I'm losing it too. 
Yeah. Well, that's a nice though. That'd be nice. That's yeah. good. It's Together. nice to have a younger person dragging you out to things and that's right. You see how the kids live these days. That's right. Hey, Uncle Ed. That's right. Uncle Ed, <laughs> we're going up. Let's go up and be demonstrate up at Columbia. <laughs> no, I don't think she'd want to do that. <laughs> yeah, all yours, Alex. I would have gone up there, but they they're not letting they if you aren't a member of the student body, they won't let you in to, to, to grade the, the, the facility. What? They're trying to get them to leave. I think they should be allowed to stay there as long as they want to stay. You know, I was arguing with somebody the other night. We I get together with um, four of the other people who don't usually call this show on su Saturday night, and we just talk bad things back and forth. And they were saying, well, you know, these kids don't know what they're demonstrating for. And I argued back that I think they do know what they're demonstrating for. I said, the problem is, is that they... I said, you, what you should do is be happy they're demonstrating. Because in this day and age, if they, if they weren't kids who were demonstrating, they'd be out looking at their phone. They'd be watching TikTok. You know, they'd be playing, uh, going to YouTube and run, run, watching endless videos. I said, instead, what are they doing? They're actually demonstrating for something they believe in. I said, now you may not agree with it, but... At least they're doing something, mm -hmm. you know, and we think that people, kids today don't do anything like that. And uh, uh, it, so I, I think positively about them because they, they believe in something and they're fighting for it. Um, you know, um, they say that some of them, some, some of the chants were a death to Jews or something like that. Uh, but uh, being Jewish, I know why. Uh, no. Uh, they, they, um, but that's, you know, it's like one or two people up there doing the it's rest not of one or two, just, Alex. It, it's a handful. It's, it's, you know, more than a handful. And, and probably, probably they were Palestinians who were mm -hmm. going to school there. And, uh, you know, I'm telling you, they, many, re they have, they have their reasons. Okay. Now you don't agree with them, but they have their reasons. I mean, if you're if, if somebody goes death to Jews and you say, well, "Where are you from?" and they go Gaza, can you blame them? You know, but is this Monday talk? Is this Monday talk? This oh, is, I got into <laughs> this. And I shouldn't get into. This. I'm I'm signing off. Bye. Nice talking. <laughs> uh, and good good to see Amy and I. The only people working. <laughs> oh, really? Rub it in, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're what? You're, how late are you working till today? Uh, as long as quickly as I can get out of here. Oh, okay. Yeah, two, two I had to work before. yesterday, so I deserve a day off. Oh, hey, for how? <laughs> now tell them what you do, Charlie. Since maybe... well, yesterday I was doing the 2023 taxes for the Austin Umpires Association. Oh, really? Oh, that okay. When, why were you doing? Uh, are you that good at math? I better be. I'm the treasurer of the of the organization. <laughs> well, that doesn't mean anything. It's just all you need to know how to do if you're if you have that job is how to steal money. <laughs> well, I'm doing that pretty badly. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. broke. How'd you miss the deadline? It's not a deadline for nonprofits. The deadline is May fifteenth. Correct. You're right. Oh, okay. we're a nonprofit. Okay. Five hundred one C four. See, he knows all that. But are you good at doing taxes, though? Uh, I ought to be. I've been doing my own taxes for fifty something years. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you're oh. good at it. it. Just means <laughs> the government made more money than they I've could. I've never have. been audited. I've never had to pay a fine or anything. Yeah, because they're looking at your return, going, "Boy, did this guy overpay?" <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. You know, yeah. they never they never get a hold of you and go, "You know, you're overpaying here. <laughs> we need to adjust this. Let's help you." No, they never do it. Do they, Scott? You're giving me a look. No, I I overpaid my taxes last year. Yeah, 
And now they're looking at my income. <laughs> what? Yeah. You well were paid. So now well, I, I, I paid quarterly uh, amounts every quarter because and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I've been paying them because TurboTax said you need to pay this much every quarter. So I did it. Okay. You're self-employed. What? You're self-employed, right? No, I'm retired. Oh, you're retired. Yeah. But but I was moving money from a, a uh, IRA to a Roth oh, IRA. That's so I'm actually I'm actually uh, taking money from one spot, putting it in another spot, but paying the taxes on the money from the first spot. Yeah, that's terrible. You, you can't take the money. See, as long as the money is in an account, like Vanguard, you don't pay taxes on it till you withdraw it. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And that's what I did. Right? But I withdrew it. And you I withdrew it to put it into another account. And they shouldn't charge you taxes for that. because you. No, no, they have to. They have to because there's no tax paid on that original money. Mm -hmm. So now when you then withdraw that money from where you put it. Tax-free. Oh, it is tax free. Ah, okay. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the whole thing was I've been moving this money for the last couple of years. And I thought maybe I was going to move some more last year, but I didn't. But I paid all these taxes up front. And the IRS is looking at it and going, like, uh, we're not going to pay you your money till we look at it. Because I overpaid my taxes. So, you overpaid what you said your is incorrect. Taxes, it makes no sense. <laughs> what? That makes no sense at all. Well, I, I agree with you, obviously. <laughs> so they're going to audit you. No, they they didn't say audit. They said, we want to review your <laughs> stuff. But it's not an audit. They're not going to look back many years. Right. They're just going to look back and say, oh, you've been putting money from an IRA to a Roth IRA, and you didn't do it this year, but why did you pay those quarterly payments? Because... I, I don't know. TurboTax said to. I do everything TurboTax said. Yeah. But so. shouldn't you be getting money back? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A boatload. Yeah. Yeah. But the government isn't saying, oh, hey, you overpaid. No. Uh, <clears throat> well, I think the fact that I overpaid, they're looking at it. Okay. Okay. I mean, it, it's crazy, but it's, 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 you know, and that, and they think I have a business for some reason. I don't understand, but anyway, there's a lot of, a lot of, I, I don't like taxes anymore. I think I'm not going to vote for Trump next year. I know that. <laughs> well, uh, this year, this year, not next year, this year. When I, when I was lucky enough to be mentioned in this will, a friend of mine, uh, I immediately called my business manager and I said, how much tax do I have to pay on that? And he explained to me what? All of it. <laughs> no. He explained to me that I don't owe any tax at all. On on, on inheritance? On inheritance. Oh. You know why? Because yeah. when it goes into probate and they do all the stuff they do, they, they pay the, the taxes, taxes on that then. money. Yeah. So I don't owe any taxes yeah. the money they're going to give me. Uh, and when I heard <clears> that, I immediately had an orgasm. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> First one in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of anything with the government and taxes and stuff where the my, my business manager said to me, oh, no, you don't have to pay taxes on that. Mm. I went, really? You said well, yeah, the taxes have already been paid on that money. Okay. I mean, uh, there are other times that you, you have taxes you paid money on and you don't have to pay. Uh, but, you know, it's... It, uh, what, if you get I'm, more than eleven million dollars, you got to pay taxes on it. Oh, you mean in a in a uh, <laughs> inheritance? Yeah. Inheritance, yeah. So eleven million is it? Yeah, that's what it was. Oh <laughs> damn it! Then I have to pay taxes. Jeez <laughs> Almighty! God, if I got eleven million dollars right now, somebody left it to me. I don't know what I. I mean, look at how old I am. I would. I would. What can I do with it? Nothing. You know. There's 11 of us here. You could start by the <laughs> Exactly. It's really easy math. I can help we'll get, you with get a million. We'll we'll over and help a million. You. Charlie and I will fly over and help you. Anybody know who, who Chris Catalano is? 
Hmm. He doesn't sound familiar. No, he doesn't. I, and I'm afraid to put him on because he might say something dirty. Oh. You know? I thought he was a tax attorney or something. <laughs> should yeah, I? If we don't know him, don't put him on. What? Should, should I, I take know. a chance? No. Uh, no. Um... Really? Scott's going, yeah. Do it! <laughs> <laughs> Live dangerously. Well, Scott, if you're <laughs> listening to me and you really want to come on, uh, go to my uh, Facebook page, okay, where this is running right now, okay, and just write something to let me know. Tell him to legit. identify himself. Huh? Tell him to <laughs> identify himself. I mean, so that, you know, it, 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 that would help, you know. But yeah. I, just, I just don't want to admit him because... Sometimes when I admit people I don't know, suddenly I'm facing, you know, naked guys doing shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Francine? I do. Why do you have you gotten that kind of problem? With I've it? seen like I go to a lot of uh Zoom readings, you know, uh poetry readings and so on. And <laughs> at the very beginning there were like, you know, all of a sudden it would be like sex in one of the squares. And in poetry uh, readings, yep. <laughs> yep. I've actually had worse. I've yep. had defecation. Oh, so, oh are you God. serious? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but usually, I can catch these guys because yeah. they start their tape, uh, yeah. their video. Uh, it, they they take a time, and if I just go in and I say hello, Chris, are you there? And he, all I get is uh, you know nothing. I know I better get rid of it. But this show, see, on the other show, I run the show through uh, a, a video switcher called OBS. And uh, so I immediately, when I go to somebody like him, put my face on the screen, not you guys. All right? Um, but I can't do that on this show because I just send this directly from from Zoom out to, out to the... Uh, uh, out to Facebook, so yeah, uh, whatever. So Chris, wait a minute. Has Chris tried to say anything? Just uh, no, no. Let me see if there is such a guy. Oh, uh, let me see here, Chris. Uh, well, Chris. Okay, Chris Catalana. It doesn't sound like a name somebody would make up. Oh, well, there is a Chris Catalano. Let me see here. Chris Catalano, he's in Villanova University, lives in Chicago. Huh. Studied mechanical engineering at Villanova University. Ooh. Oh, sure. He's good then. He's okay. <laughs> Nobody would make that up. <laughs> should I should I take the chance? Yeah, give it a try. Yeah. No, it's just kicking okay, I'm going to have my finger on the button here. Oh, no. you, start, you start talking about $11 million and everybody comes out of the woodwork. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the way you protect yourself. Chris, Chris <laughs> Are you there, Chris? Hello. Oh, he really is a person. He's not. Hey. He, you know. Yeah. Hi, Chris. How are you? Very well, thank you. I'm so excited to be able to chat with you. I listened to your um, to your autobiography. I spent probably spent a lot of my misspent youth being influenced by you. You are the first 20th century influencer, obviously, definitely. Well, how did I influence you? Well, um, listen. Basically, I mean, you look like you turned out okay. It says you 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 go to Villanova or you, what? Are you you're not going to Villanova University? You went there or something? I wound up at the university. So actually, you know what? Uh, inspired by you, in part, I did a little bit of the radio thing. Uh -huh. um, it's funny that, and this just this just jumps ahead a little bit. Uh, where are you originally from? That you I'm originally from Los Gatos, which is what is now the headquarters of Netflix, by the way, and uh -huh. um, that's on the nestled on sort of the edge, the western edge. Of the isn't that uh, Ryan? Isn't that where you are? That's where you're off. Yeah, I'm in I'm in a valley, so it's like five minute drive. Yeah. What city? What yeah. city? Uh, San Jose, Almaden Valley. Almaden Valley, okay, Almaden Valley. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Los Gatos. How did you wind, how did you wind up in, uh, are you in, in, in Chicago? Now I'm in Calabasas. 
Mm -hmm. But what happened was, yeah. Oh, so you're down there uh, uh, stalking the Kardashians. (laughs) You know what? As a matter of fact, I'm about three blocks away from Hidden Hills. And we do have a lot of, we have a number of Kardashians there. Um, uh, We have a number of rappers over there. We've got somebody called French Montana, but the guy doesn't speak yeah. like a French, by the way. I tested out. I said, Come on, what do you? And he said, and he just pulls out his car, his, his platinum card and doesn't talk. That talks for him. So um, so, anyways, <laughs> one of the things that uh so I I I kind of grew up in the tech world. I went to USC, I went to the school to send television, but I came back into the tech world after this. I got a little IMDB page. You can we can talk about that later, but um so the thing is, Alex, that I when I noticed about your autobiography is that neglected in there is the fact that you essentially gave birth to the culture of the Silicon Valley in the 80s and 90s. Really? I didn't I don't I wouldn't say so. I mean, that's why it wasn't included. By the way, in case you don't know what he's talking about, I did a thing called The Life in the Passing Lane, an audio audio biography. Fantastic, yes. And what it is, it's, it's great. Um, I think it wound up being 69 episodes. Episodes. How many did you listen to? Uh, Chris? Oh, okay. Me? Yeah, I listened to the whole thing, but I listened to over and over again. And Wait, uh, you should be getting paid for that, dude. Yeah, um, I listened to over and over again, and um, I was really, it was, the whole thing was really compelling. And I think, you know, there's a trick to, to, to being a, you know, to being an announcer, to being, to being able to have discussions that you have and keep people looped in. I spent a great deal of my loop, uh, of my youth listening to you on Live 105 and Quake, um, as did a lot of other people I know. And that's, that brings us back to the Silicon Valley. Remember that the guys that were commuting from Santa Cruz over to San Jose every day, mm-hmm. uh, Live 105 reached them. The guys that created Netflix were probably listening to your, listening to your show every day. So okay. why why do I have to pay money to watch them? Why no no I- no you don't have to pay. Money. I'm just saying people should be paying. <laughs> yeah, good point. That's a good point. If you can get through to them, see what you can do. But mm-hmm. um, I, I, the 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 fact is, you're probably one of the most important influencers of the 20th century and the 21st century as well, and you don't even know it. Um, so um, it's a real pleasure to be able to touch. I base. thought the most important influencer was like Kim Kardashian, <laughs> or that no, or that woman that who had a uh, wo- woman. What? What did you say? What, I said no, he never used to where? be a big. I used to hey, be a well, big you know what? It's her witty rap RT. It's not that her witty rap RT, her with her imparted wisdom and her fantastic points of view are not influencing. Wait, wait, her me, fantastic sure points are. of view is that a? Uh... <laughs> well, what I'll tell you something. To? I will tell you something. Um, she, God bless her for take for for failing the bar fewer times than Vila Grossa, our former mayor. Um, so wait a minute. I don't want to sit here bashing my neighbor. Okay, it's all good. Yeah. But um, I think what's in, what's important to note there there's the influence that you probably had on people living in the Silicon Valley and growing up there because you were always talking about tech issues. You're the first one that I remember saying, "Hey, um, one day that computer and the TV is all going to be one thing," which it essentially is. I did um, say that we're going to be doing this. That. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that you germinated a lot of their seeds. Mm-hmm. The other thing that was was kind of ignored in your in your autobiography that is really important that essentially the this culture that you brought in the the music even though oh by the way could you play more music in these meetings by the way <laughs> <laughs> the the music that you essentially brought in the the music that we that you essentially brought in at KQAK and Live One Hundred Five. And the number three market in the country was really what we call 80s music now. And that was essentially the new way. But I had nothing to do with that. I know you didn't. As a matter of fact, you wish you would shoot it. But you, uh, the station breaks, you had to play it. And I think what happened was, remember that when they brought you into the quake and they brought you into, uh, into Live 105, they ushered in that music as well. Depeche Mode, for example, was not... Well, it was all what we call modern rock. Yeah, yeah mo- what we call modern rock is really the new see, way... I had simple. nothing to do with that because the station... The quake, the, no, the Quake decided to go to modern rock, to that, that style of music. And uh, I just simply played it because that was right. the format. You know, when I right. played music, I played it from their playlist. Right, but, but because I wanted that music on the sh- station, although I found that that music more fit my style and what I was doing in a kind of a talk format, so it really blended nicely. But I had nothing to do with that. 
Well, no, that's cool. But I'm just saying that you're still, the thing is, in a, in a Forrest Gump type fashion, you're still ushering in the culture of these eras. <laughs> and this music that we call the 80s music, which is synth pop, many, they called it modern rock at the time. Alex Bennett is ushering it at K KQAK, he's ushering it at Live 105, and everybody's listening to it in the third biggest market in the country. K-Rock in LA had a lot to do with it, and there was a lot of format. Well, then what happened was, is that, I don't want to get into too much of this because people okay. are probably bored right. with my history. But uh, the the guy who was programming K-Rock then programmed the Quake, and that's why that music right. came up. And so I'm saying that it was the decision of the company to play that music, not mine. I mean, right, right. when I heard it, I said, perfect, it fits my show perfectly, although I never played music much. That's right. Although you did kind of Forrest Gump it in, and that's my point. They were not playing. I don't know if I'm a Forrest Gump. Nobody was yeah. playing Depeche Mode on regular <laughs> radio stations. Nobody was playing The Cure on regular radio stations. And yet all these bands were basically broken through you. They weren't even playing Bondi on regular radio stations, except that one disco song of theirs. So all I'm saying is that you had a great deal more of an influence on the culture. And I think also the other thing that was- that well, I, think you're, I think you're highly overestimating my influence. Take the win, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> win, my man. Just take the win and shut up <laughs> about it, man. Like, Come on, Alex. It, Come on, man. Alex said that was great. It's like Mandy so said. It, it's like Mandy you know, said. Let's just look at the Howard Stern. Is it Howard Stern is only a cheap adolescent imitation of you? He that's right. listening well, that's to true. you in that's New true. York, that's true. and then he yeah, and he jumps on with his shock radio. Let's talk to lesbians about sex and less. But you were talking to real lesbians about important lesbian issues at the time. Yeah. The other thing is this. How important is the tongue? No! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm told. It's I'm told it's very important. So I'm told. And and so um so that you know, just down to the fact that some of the first real information we got about the AIDS epidemic yeah. came through your show. And that was really important. I mean, it was a time when people well, I'll tell you though, I ran a show in case people don't know. The show I ran in San Francisco was basically a show in which I brought comedians on and we just went wild for four hours a day. Right, And, and right. prior to that, nobody was putting comedians on the air. All of a sudden after- Right, with a live it, audience. When with I, a yeah, live audience. When I did it and was successful with it, disc jockeys or talk show hosts all over the country started doing the same thing. Uh, they didn't do it as well because <clears throat> I knew how to be a straight man. I knew how to use the comics and be a straight man to them. They didn't. They and the comedians would tell me they go into another market and the guy would during the break say, "Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say this, and you can say that, and then I'm going to say this, and you can say that." And I'm going, you know, that's not the way you run this show, you know. And they were very disappointed when they went to other markets because they didn't have the kind of show to be on and the kind of exposure. I mean, Brian used to listen to it, right, Brian? Yeah, you know. And, and mind you, too, this is the format that is the idea that the host and the artist is in control of the format, which you had in your contract. This is the precursor to podcasting. Really, your shows were all just podcasts with a live studio audience, which I don't think any of them would have the guts to do. Well, now. I, I, yeah, I always said, uh, I always told uh, the, the owners of radio stations when they hired me, that I want in my contract that I have total control over the program. Right. And the reason he was is that you know what's going to happen, folks, is if they uh, if I if I'm not successful, um, they're going to fire me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'd rather they fire me because I'm doing what I think I should be doing, rather than because I'm doing what they're telling me to do. And that's why you know, ruin it. Oh, look who's who's here. Lynn Frisco, I believe, is in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Oh, wow. His call wow. has to be coming from Italy. Yeah. Um, where are you exactly, uh, 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 Len? Wait, he has to push you. You're connected. Your, your audio is connected. Yeah. yeah. The language barrier, maybe. 
Can you hear me? <laughs> He's from Cali. Can you hear me, Lynn? Say something. I'm a child. I can. I'm here. here. I there just joined the audio. Hello. There he is. Oh, look there where he is. is. Oh, my God. I'm, 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 in, I'm in Monte Catarmi Terme in the middle of Italy near Florence and Pisa. And I have no idea where else, but it's absolutely fucking gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> Look at that, folks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is something that I dreamed of years ago, but I never thought would happen. And that's I could do a show and I could have somebody in Italy and I could have somebody in California. I could have somebody in Hawaii or someplace like that. And they all look like they're next door. You know, he, he... I, I, I missed you guys last week and I'm so sorry I didn't join, but we were in the air and we've been in Italy for about 10 days. We got another five to go and it is absolutely the best trip of my life. I mean, I just, I cannot believe where I am. <laughs> yeah, well, the <laughs> worst trip of our life was in, in Italy as well. But that was only because Marjorie had back problems and she couldn't walk by the time we got to Italy. So the first the first five days I rented a car and I'm telling you what I would never do that again if my life depended on it. Why? It was horrible. I I almost died, I'm gonna go with six hundred and twelve times. <laughs> no, come on. Because of the I had a car in Italy, it was fine. <laughs> I, I don't I, have a I don't, I don't have a goddamn uh, I don't have a car like you, Brian. Well, no, well, when I when I drove, I, when I, I, I drove all through Italy. Marjorie and I drove through Italy, and yeah. I didn't have any problem with the driving. You know, my yeah. parents did well, it at except, eighty. Except, years except old. we were following a car who was going in the right direction as we were, and we're following the car. We made the left one. He did the right one. He did. He goes up a hill. And we're at his house. You know, <laughs> driving direct, the direction. Remember, Alex, the, we drove right up to his farmhouse. Oh. The, direct, the directions were easy. It was the fucking buses coming around the corner, that, you know, on a blind curve. They were trying to kill me. <laughs> oh, were you on one of those mountain roads that were? Yeah. Oh, we were. In I did that. I did that yeah. coming out of uh, out of um, uh, where do you go? Switzerland. Uh, coming out of Zermatt and driving into Italy. And you have to go up this hill, and then it's just windy, and they're not even railings on the side of the road. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, the Amalfi oh, Coast is like that, huh? That's the where I was. I was like, on the yeah. I was on the Amalfi Coast, Brian. It's exactly where I was. Yeah, my my, my friend my friend has a couple of friends there, and he had an old Alfa Romeo, and he he did a video of him going on that road. And yeah, there was a couple buses that came swinging out there and almost yeah. knocked him off. Around the a blind curve out of a tunnel and you just go, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it was, it was, it was crazy. I'm glad I did it. I don't know that I'd ever do it again. Yeah. 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 Wow. And, and now we're up near Florence. We went to P we're going to Pisa tomorrow. We went and saw the statue of David yesterday. And that's, Rome and that's whatever. Worth, I mean, that's it's worth it's the different. price of admission. Just the statue. Every, is worth it. every penny. Every penny. Well, I, 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 I have to take Marjorie back to Siena. Uh, because, you do. Yeah, because no, because she, she spent it. the entire time in Siena, in the hotel room. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I was going out to get her medicine and things like that. I mean, it was just, it was insane. Well, I just did, I just did laundry while I had a cocktail and it was, you know, I mean, we, I've been, we've been gone for 10, 12 days. I needed to do laundry. Yeah. Lynn, I have a question. Lynn, I have a question. Yeah. How big is the David statue? I mean, is it um, like, it's, it's, about, it's, it's, it's 17 it's, feet tall. Yeah, it's about, oh, yeah, that's exactly right. Yes, that's correct. Well, no, it's the David, very large. The David. And he has, a, he has a lovely ass, by the way. But the David is, is, is in <laughs> the... Nice uh, penis, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's rock hard, isn't it, Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> isn't, 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 isn't the David uh, in, uh, isn't the David in France? No, no. it's in no. Florence, Italy. It's in Florence. Italy. Well, I, have, I, I have lots of. <laughs> go go on my Facebook page. I posted a bunch of pictures over the last yeah. few days, and you will see him. He is. Uh, it was. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Really? Because where are you right I, now? I, I saw. So uh, I'll tell you in a minute. I saw what I thought was the David when I was at the, what? What's the big museum? There's copies all Louvre, over the place. Louvre, apparently. The Uffizi Gallery. 
No, the yeah. big, the big Louvre. That's the Louvre. Louvre. The Louvre. The Louvre. Yeah. Louvre. The, the Louvre. Louvre. Yeah. Because the one I always go to that I like is the Musée d'Orsay, which is, has yeah. all the. I don't know. I don't know who asked me, but mm -hmm. I'm in a town called Montecatini Terme. It is right in the center of Tuscany, near Pisa, near Le, Le, um, Florence, near. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, Vici tomorrow. Where uh, uh, Vinci, where uh, Leonardo is from, and I oh, saw his. Look what Edward has. Yeah. yeah, that's him. Uh -huh. that's well, you just demonetized it. Yeah. Seventeen feet, huh? Yeah. It's like look, it's like feet. looking in a mirror there. You know, I mean, really. So what what <laughs> what what, uh, what museum was that in? It's in a little tiny museum. I don't even know what it was called, but it was just a little tiny museum that, that we went swear, to. I swear that when I was at the Louvre, I saw that. No, you didn't. No, it's no. a copy of it. Well, no, that you know, yeah. a lot of times. There, uh, there are people who have several different copies. Yes, of uh, of, of Van Gogh's, of, of yeah. the same Van Gogh painting it was because when Van Gogh did a painting, and he, he also too. did a second one of the same. Sure, painting. sure. And so there are two versions: ones in Amsterdam and ones in the Louvre. You know, or is it right. in Say d'Orsay? Um, there's only, and there's I, only I don't know that Da Vinci didn't like do two penises. <laughs> you know, we, we saw we saw some really interesting things where he he was finishing works, but he never finished them because he died. And it was uh, but the David was the first one of the first ones he ever did. He was 23 years old. He was very, very young and he died at 89. So it was crazy that he did that at that early age. And it, oh, here and, and the Pieta and you know, the Pieta yeah, is with the yeah. the. Um, um, Mary holding Mary the body, holding the, the dead body of Jesus. Oh, dead body. He snuck into the to the um, into the museum and signed it. It's the only work he ever signed because nobody believed that a twenty-something-year-old kid did this thing. Wow! So he signed that one. He broke in with a hammer and chisel. He he carved it into her a sash on her on her chest, and he never signed anything else again for the rest of his life. Which is just, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, can I ask you a question, Lynn? Do they have a, a, a is there a glass in front of the Pieta? Uh, yes, there is. Yes. Yeah, you know, you know why that is, right? Yeah, somebody came in and broke the nose and the arm or something about oh, 20 years ago. Anybody yeah. who does something like that should get the death penalty. Uh, okay. I, I agree. You know? I agree. Uh, you you I know agree. what they're doing here in the United States? There are a couple of people that go into national parks. Yeah, and, and ruin rock formations. Yes, I saw that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You it's know, those horrible. people, those people should be put in jail for the rest of their lives. I mean, yeah. they're doing something so terrible that it can't. I can't even begin to tell you how how horrible I feel. You can't fix this, it. This no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. So mm -hmm. good. Well, I mean, nice. No, I, I'm I'm so glad I I'm so glad I. I didn't think I'd be up this late because this is nine hours. It's one o'clock at, at my house and it's 11 o'clock here almost. Now, let me ask you, how are you using Zoom? Are you actually using? I, um, uh, I, went, I went on Facebook, came to your page, clicked on the normal thing. Well, what I are do, you using? Are. Is there Wi-Fi there or what? No, this is no, no. My T-Mobile gets full. You, I get full coverage. It's wow. perfect. But you don't it's have to pay extra phone. in Europe for it? Nope. I get five you, gig for I get five gig while I'm here, so yeah, this is good. That's yeah. great clarity. How about AT&T? Yeah. Because AT and T, which I have, I think I usually have to like buy so much. You know? Nope. I, I when we we landed, it, all of a sudden it came on. I can do texting. I can do phone calls are twenty five cents a minute. Texting is free. Um, um, uh, downloading streaming is. Is free. It's it's a wonderful product. Would that I mean, be the fifty five senior magenta plan? Yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> maybe we can get Alex some love from the T Mobile Corporation. Well, maybe I should get away from AT and T and go. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe oh. it's, yeah. It, it's not costing me a nickel. When I was in Mexico, when I talked to you, it didn't cost me a nickel. It's all yeah, it's all free. Really? Uh, AT&T, yeah. I believe, tries to charge you for it. And I'm going... Nope, not, not a nickel. Not a penny. You know. Nothing. 
Did you make a lot of videos? Sure is good to... What's that? Did you make a lot of videos of your son? He wanted to know if you made videos. Oh, maybe, uh, not a lot of videos, mostly pictures. Yeah, mostly pictures. Um, yeah, we were in Facebook. We were, are great. We, yeah, I post. Yeah, go to my Facebook page. You'll see all the stuff. I'm posting it day by day. I'm going to go home back and I post saw today. They're great. They're we, great. Were in Chinca, we were in Chinca We were in Chinca today, which is a town. Oh, which no, is we were there. That's, that's where we. Have, that's where we spent our vacation. Oh, yeah, it was absolutely incredible. It's what one a I place. love. It's my favorite place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, and we, it was an accident that we wound up there, actually. Yeah, well, really? A friend of mine from the restaurant gave us the place. Well, as somebody suggested it to us, but at the time, we didn't know where we were going to go. No, but they gave us the hotel, and they told us to check it out. And yeah, but what I'm saying is, when we left, uh, where were we? We were in, uh, uh, what, what town were we in? Where did we land? And then you got a hotel, you got a room for us in an old monastery, which we thought would be nice. Oh, wow. But I guess it, 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 uh, only a monk could live in this thing, okay? <laughs> so we immediately got out of it the next day and got in the car and started driving. And I don't know how we wound up at St. Cinque Terre, but once we got there, we pretty much stayed there for the rest of our vacation. Oh, my oh, God. I could great. stay there for a week. It was it's absolutely great. freaking gorgeous. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, we, we 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 came in by boat and left by train, which was really cool, really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful beautiful place. It's yeah. a, it's a country I could live in, except for the drivers, except for you know what's really cool. You go to you go to a restaurant, and tonight we had a, a small dinner. It was thirty eight euro. There's no tax and there's no tip. You know, so at 38, you, you give them your card. I just, don't know. I just don't know how we wound up there. We went to Siena first. Yeah, we're going and there she was, and, she, and she was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Not the hospital. I wasn't in bed. the hospital. You were lying in bed. I couldn't travel with you. I <clears> stayed <throat> outside of the hotel. They had a little patio. And you did Siena. I went to see Siena. And then, husband that I am, wonderful husband that I am, oh. I remember picking, saying, okay. okay, come on, we'll get you in the car. And I got you in the car and I took you into Siena and into all the different places I had visited because I could use the car, but I couldn't really park it or stay there. So you yeah. got to see it from the car. But I didn't have to do that and I did that. And give me credit. Yes, you did. You know. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Travel by train is really fun in Italy, isn't it? Oh my God. Yes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I have not. There's not anything here that I have not enjoyed. I, well, I you just, should thank Mussolini I mean, for that because he made the trains run on time. You know, <laughs> I, I, I went to the Mussolini. Yeah, that's yeah. He's, he he signed. What did he sign? Oh, he was the one that allowed Rome to become part of Italy. I just they they were talking about that. It used to be its own thing. Now it became part of Rome during Mussolini. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He yep. was he wasn't wasn't all bad, I guess. And we went to the Vatican. We went to St. Peter's uh, two days ago. We're going to. Um, you saw the Sistine uh, the, Chapel? No, that's that's on Friday for us. Yeah. Beautiful. We'll see that on Friday. I cannot wait to see that. Yeah. Wow. And then we fly home for 13 hours from Rome to San Francisco on uh, on United on, on Friday. Hey, I Saturday. forgot that when you travel back to San Francisco, when it, it's only six hours from here. Yeah, it's 13. 12, 12 hours and 40 minutes, Rome direct to San Francisco. Uh, on, yeah, yeah. But we got we got business. Oh, I got to tell you one thing. <laughs> this is the most amazing thing. Um, on the way here, we got delayed. And um, we ended up, we were on Lufthansa. And they, they had a couple of first class seats. I didn't know first class even existed anymore. It was, it's all uh, you know, business class. And they said, we'd like to move you up to first class and i'm like oh, okay and i'm telling you what alex we had the most incredible uh nine hour flight you've ever had in your life mm -hmm. food really? and service and oh my god lufthansa what a what an airline what an airline wow yeah that's amazing yeah we i looked up the seats they were fifteen thousand dollars if we were wow. to buy them our wow. yeah fifteen thousand dollars and we paid Whatever we paid for um, business class, which was about two grand, I think. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow.
How did I you miss you guys. How huh? did you pour that? I they, they were they had six. There was one, two, three, four. There was eight seats in in first class that they didn't sell, obviously, because who's paying fifteen grand a, a ticket? <laughs> yeah. And they said we have to we have to sell these seats so that we can backfill your seats. I said, all right. Ah. So they, they asked me, they said $1,800 a person. I said, absolutely not. And then about a half hour later, they were announcing, we still have seats in first class. Can you come up? So I walked up there. I said, how much am I really going to cost me to get in here? And he, he goes, I don't know. Make me an offer. I said, $450. He goes, okay. <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. Crazy. I, I, you know, Absolutely. I feel, you know, I've been to Europe a lot, and you know, there are a lot of places you can go. Right. I, I am so, I feel so privileged that we were able to spend what was it, two weeks in China, because wow. you can't yeah, do that. Amazing. You can't do that anymore. No. You know, uh, your chances of, of getting a visa to get into China is almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was something that, and I always that's a cool to, deal. Oh man, that's we, a cool deal. Know, we saw, we went to the Lee River and those beautiful Cask Mountains that darn, it's, it's amazing. And the people are wonderful, and it's a shame they got such a fucking disgusting government. I know it is true. Yeah, but Italy is is a very friendly group of people. You know, oh, my they're, parents they're are lovely. Italian. They're lovely. My, you know even my grandparents all my you know, grandparents all came from Sicily. And I see these people walking by with the nose, you know. I mean, they got the Roman nose <laughs> thing on. It's great. <laughs> it's my I'll it's my peeps. That. My peeps are here. I'll tell you that. I think the best people anywhere are the in Spain. I think they are just they're wonderful. Yeah. That's going to be our next trip, Spain and Portugal. Brian, I think. You're, yeah. Brian, you're Italian, aren't you? Yeah, I've been to Italy. I, I I flew down to Milan and I got a rental car and went to Venice. Went down like through Florence. My family's from Lucca, so I stayed in Lucca. Oh my god, we're going to Lucca tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Lucca is very beautiful. And then uh, Pisa, and then I uh, went to Rome. For you, a week. you know that by being Italian, you automatically have citizenship in Italy. And you, know, you, buy, and you can buy property and do all the things wow. that you would be able to do as, as long as it has to be only a couple of generations back generations yeah yeah, yeah it's my yeah. grandfather so it's two generations yeah i'm yeah. two gen my grandparents all came from here as well so yeah. i think brian i think you and i should maybe get some some dual citizenship to go on here <laughs> yeah well, you know, it's uh, wonderful. It's wonderful. I'm I'm sorry that I, I I usurped your entire show, but thank you for. No, I'm glad I showed you. It was a great, it, it, it was a great but, pleasure. But lower your camera so we can see more of the buildings in back. Oh, oh look! Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what we got going here. Well, that see, looks guys. that looks like you are somewhere. You know, uh, it's yeah. it's a it's a this is the square of Monte Catini Terme. It's a it's a thermal spa. Um, um area that was created back in the 70s when thermal spas were covered by the italian um health care plan then all of a sudden they said yeah we're not going to do that anymore <laughs> so these spas went you know dormant and i guess they got bought out by hotels and and now they're you know so this is the central yeah. square right in town so and the thing is when you when you go to places like italy you know you get on the freeway and you you take a ticket and you pay you pay to use the freeways right yeah. But when you oh, go yeah. there, it is so clean. And then you come back to like the Bay Area, and there's like mattresses on the side of the freeway. <laughs> and everything. I mean, it's depressing. It, it, it's it's so it beautiful. Is. The old castles, and all the hills, and everything is so beautiful. Is it that right. bad down in Calabasas, Chris? Well, I'll tell you something. That kind of thing is not allowed in Calabasas. But when you get across the street into Woodland Hills, the city of Los Angeles, it starts getting progressively nastier and i think mm -hmm. there should be some kind of competition between downtown la and downtown san francisco right now because i think we got you beat down here my man you I mean, they have my designated my crapping streets in downtown la where all of the homeless <laughs> have gotten together for well, it's, it's california where the streets are the lined crap, up the crapping is only going to take place on these particular streets and skid Row. <laughs> california where the line the, the road the streets are paved with poop yeah, well, you know, we were on BART last a couple of weeks ago, and there was a woman taking a shit between the BART cars. <laughs> <laughs> like, You've got to be kidding me. 
Yeah, but, but you don't you don't have double decker topless uh, bus tours of the homeless area. This is now no, no. California. It's not part of the California experience here. You're right. <laughs> They've got a tour here where you can tour all the homeless enclaves, the homeless encampments, the piles of garbage, <laughs> and you can experience 405 traffic going north in the daytime and going south in the, in the morning. Yeah, that's perfect. North south. Chris, that's a money maker right there. Hop on, hop off bus to see the homeless. Right, that's right. That's right. Most of them want to hop off halfway up, uh, halfway up Sepulveda Pass a little bit. Anyway, Len, (laughs) uh, thank you for giving us a little tour of Italy. Uh, Yes, well, I mean, this is a very small tour of Italy. And and let's give him a little credit, folks, because what's the time difference? It's 11 o'clock. It is 11 o'clock at night here. Way past the senior bedtime for sure, my man. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I, I haven't met you, Chris, but you're absolutely right. Uh, Chris, Chris, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if that's the bedtime for seniors, and uh, I should be in bed by now. <laughs> you should be in bed by now. It's only five o'clock here, but this is bedtime for most seniors. <laughs> so this is, this, this is wonderful. Is the new I, 60 and f- yeah, 60, well, I'll be, I'll, 40, 80s into 60. I'll yeah. be home in a few days, and then I will be back on on Monday next week. So mm-hmm. oh. have, uh, a, look, have, a, have a great time. Go yeah. to yeah. my it Sounds like he is having a great time. Yeah, yeah go, go to my Facebook page. I've been posting for the last 10 days. Go check out all the posts. I've been looking all at the them. They're great. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, I, I know you've been liking Thank them. You. Thank you, Marjorie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, we got to go here. Uh, All right. I hope right. everybody's enjoyed it. We've had a few people being totally quiet, like uh, 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 Charlene Solis. Say hello. Charlene. Charlene. Wait, Hi, Charlene. Hi, Charlene. On your microphone. Hi, <laughs> Charlene. Yeah. Taking a nap. There, there we go. <laughs> Say hello, Charlene. Charlene, you have your microphone <laughs> off. No, I turned. had to turn it off. No, it's still no. off. Hold oh, on. Let's let her say hello. Charlene, say hello. Oh, no. You got your microphone <laughs> off. Microphone's off. My, my Charlene, your microphone. Uh, poor thing. Yeah. Aren't I a big dummy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking away. Nobody can hear me. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Marjorie. Thanks to Charlene. Uh, thanks, Francine, for being here. She said a couple of words today. We didn't hear a, word, a peep out of John Ewing. Hello, John. Hi, Alex. <laughs> I commented on Len's uh, clarity in his picture from Italy. It's amazing. Yeah. It, it yeah. really is. It's amazing. Just the technology is amazing. Yeah, uh, I agree. Also, thanks to Charlie for being with us. Uh, the only rocket scientist here. <laughs> um, and and Scott Boddicker. Scott, great having you here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Paula, you know we love you, dear. When are you coming to New York again? Soon. Soon? Good. Soon. Good, because we... Yay! Mandy? Amy. <laughs> you said it's Amy all show, remember? <laughs> well done uh and, and mandy thank you so much for having joined us today you're welcome thanks for having me yeah. i enjoyed it and you As had I... a good did you have, a good, trip to new, did you have a good trip to new york or did you said there was some problems? i did i had a lot of fun yes it, i i was just in denial about the weather but no we had lots of fun we went to andy has got the best hair here today but i had the <laughs> second best <laughs> And when you, that's right. And so when you're gone, I'm back to number one, man. Yes. Uh, <laughs> some great Boddicker's going to show you up. Look at Boddicker now. Oh, my Boddicker, God. Look at you. Look at him. Look at Ben Franklin. Third best. You got the third best. Ben Franklin. Wow. wow. Oh, that's a strong number three. I'm telling you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> you're number three. I used to have hair. This is some Vidal Sassoon shit. I'll tell you about that later on. Well, Marjorie's got some great hair. She's got I, that used hair. Have, I used to have that hair. This is the like number that. one hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah right you did, here. Alex. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Hey, Jeff, thank you. Great, great dinner with you. Love you. The other night. And uh, thanks to Brian. 
Right. Hey, Len, is anybody home? I'm, I'm going to hit your house on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I knew, I knew there had to be one guy that would do that. And it would be you. Yeah, that's a good guy. Um, Chris, thank you for calling. Call us again, will you? It's uh, always good to have new people here. Now that I know your name, I will immediately pick up on you. So, you know, four o'clock on, uh, well, it's what, two, one o'clock? It's actually one o'clock here in Cali. Yeah, and it's been a pleasure. And um, I want to tell you, Alec, I want to thank you for making my young life three or four hours a day back in the day, really, really <laughs> uh, special and sharing, you know, your intellect, your thoughts, your viewpoints, and really made life a lot you, better. You make me, you make me, you make me blush. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how we oh, all a feel. a little skin there to blush, because my I man. You're news. lighting up, I, I got you're news lighting for you. up all of Harlem with your blush, my I'm man. I'm married to Marjorie, and quite frankly, I don't get that in my private life. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's all good. It's but, you know, she, all she says was, was that when you were famous? That's <laughs> what I get out of it. Uh, and You're still for... a big shot, Alan. Yeah, yeah, you are a big shot. Anyway, thanks to uh, thanks to Len for calling us from Italy. And uh, thanks to all of you. And we'll see you again next week right here on the pop-up show. So don't, don't forget. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. don't forget <laughs> Who have you what? forgotten? Who have you forgotten? What? Who, did you, not, who did you not say goodbye to? Oh, you know something? You're right. It always yeah, oh my God. Fine. I get so welled up in letting people saying goodbye to everybody. <laughs> so I forget to mention that to sign this off, ladies and gentlemen, Len LaFrisco to say, <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, give me a break. I'm getting old, okay? Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, to bullshit. sign us off, here's Edward oh. Berger, who says... That's all, folks. Bye-bye, yeah. everybody. Thank I you. I can go to bed now. Thank you, Edward. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>